right, so I'm going to do a video to go over the chapter four review number two. Right, that review number one from Friday was a little crazy. So hopefully after you do this review, you'll feel a little bit better um, about the test that's coming up on Wednesday. All right, so the first section is state the slope and the y-intercept. Right, and we know in the equation y equals mx plus b that this is the slope, the number right in front of the x, and the constant, the number by itself, is the y-intercept, right? So for number one, we have y equals 7x minus 5. So my slope is 7, or if you want to put it as 7 over 1, you can. Either way is fine. And the y-intercept is negative 5. I think on the test, it will just say 7, okay? So number 2 y equals a negative one-half x plus two. The slope here is the number right in front of the x, which is a negative one-half, and the y-intercept is the constant by itself, positive two. So there's no math to be done here. This is just looking at the equation, finding the number that's right in front of the x, and finding the constant, the number that's by itself, okay? Now, when we get to number three, it's a little bit more confusing because this does not start out in y equals mx plus b form, in um, slope-intercept form. So I need to move this x over to the right-hand side to get y equals a positive 4x minus 2. And you have to do that because if you just looked at what was in front of the x with it over here, you would have put negative 4 right? But it's not negative 4 because when we put it in the right formula, y equals mx plus b, by adding 4x to both sides, we find that the slope is actually a positive 4 and the y-intercept is negative 2, right? So make sure that it is in the form of y equals mx plus b. All right, then we have a couple that are a little bit tricky. So let's look at y equals 5. So first off, we should have memorized that y equals a number is a horizontal line that's going to go through the number 5. So this is the constant. This is not the number in front of the x, right? So what would be in front of an x to make it go away? Well, 0 times x would make it go away. So this is actually a slope of 0 and a y-intercept of Five. And if we were to graph that, one, two, three, four, five, this would be a horizontal line going through five. Y equals a number is always a horizontal line when you graph it. And we know that horizontal lines have a slope of zero. So all of that kind of goes together. All right? So this is your answer right here. All of this is just explaining it. All right, and then number five says y equals x. Well, that's very interesting, right? This is still in y equals mx plus b. So what number is right in front of that x? There is a coefficient of one. And what are we adding over here? What do we add that doesn't add anything? Zero. So this has a slope of one. Notice there's x is never a part of the slope. People try to say that the slope is x when there's nothing there, but there's a 1 there. And the y-intercept is 0. All right. So we have one more of these, number 6. We have y plus 5 equals 3x. So my slope is 3 and my y-intercept, wait a minute, is my y-intercept 5? No, because this is not in standard form. So let's get this 5 out of here so that we have y by itself, 3x minus 5. Now my y-intercept is a negative 5. So slope is 3, the number in front of the x, y-intercept, negative 5, okay? So you have six problems like this on your review, but there are not six problems like this on your test. I think there's two, okay? But we just want to practice, practice, practice. Okay, so now we're going to do the opposite of that. We're going to write in slope-intercept form. 
So we're going to go backwards from this. I'm going to give you the slope in the y-intercept, right? So if m is negative 2 and b is 5, we're just going to plug those right into the equation y equals mx plus b. So the negative 2 is going to go here and the 5 is going to go here. And of course the x and the y are always the variables that we have. So we get y equals negative 2x plus 5. Slope of negative 2, y-intercept of 5. All right, so we're just making sure that you really understand y equals mx plus b. So if m equals 1 third and b equals 0, if I plug in, and don't be lazy. Um, if you want to make sure you're not making dumb mistakes, then write the equation each time, right? It doesn't take that long, and it keeps you from making a silly mistake. All right, so now we have plus zero here, but on your answers, like on multiple choice on a test, there won't be a plus zero there. There will be just y equals one third x, all right? So know that that plus zero won't show up in the answers, okay? All right, so number nine, we have the m is negative four, and the y-intercept is negative one half. So we're going to have y equals a negative 4x minus 1 half. Now some of you put plus a minus 1 half, which is fine, but you won't see it that way on the answer key, right? Because in algebra we always try to make things um, as simplified as we can. So plus a minus is just minus or minus a plus. And now we have kind of a tricky one with number 10. We have a slope of 0 and a y-intercept of 2. So if you're really smart, you will recognize that when the slope is 0, that means we have a horizontal line. So this is going to just end up being y equals 2. But we'll go there the long way. Let's put in a 0 for m and a positive 2. Well, what is 0 times x? 0 times x is 0. So we get y equals 2. And if you can recognize that from the get go and not have to go through all that, that's fine as well. Okay, so every year I tell students that the slope of zero and the slope that's undefined is going to be on the test. And every year, many students miss it. I mean, I like, I tell you what's on the test, right? So remember that a vertical line has an undefined slope. And the reason it's undefined is because it ends up with some number being divided by zero, right? Like three divided by zero or negative two divided by zero or any number divided by zero. You cannot divide by zero in math. <coughs> it's undefined. A horizontal line has a slope of zero, right? And it ends up being zero over some number, like zero over negative two, let's say. And that equals zero, right? This equals undefined. If it's on the denominator, this equals zero, right? You can remember the NO, you can't have that or the OK, you can have this. The variable can be on the bottom, but the zero cannot be on the bottom. <coughs> so, excuse me, that's gonna be a question on the test. So zero, three, what is that equal to? Is it zero or undefined? It's zero, it's OK. Number 12, two over zero, you cannot divide by zero, so that one is undefined. A vertical line, what is the slope of a vertical line? Undefined. So how do you know this for the test? You memorize this, buddy. That is all you can do. You have got to memorize. So this has a slope of zero, right? So you have to memorize this. You just have to know it, right? It's in your bank of knowledge of things that you know. There's no real math to figure out. Um, you just have to have it memorized. 
vertical lines have a slope that's undefined, horizontal lines have a slope that is zero. Okay, or this might say zero at that. Right? So now comes the part that's a little bit harder. <coughs> Excuse me. What is the equation of a line? And it's graphed. Okay, so what we have to remember are the two things that we need to find the equation of the line. We need to know slope and y-intercept. So we have the point one, two, three, four. I'm gonna do these a little smaller on here. Four, zero, and zero, two. So the two things we need to know are the slope and the y-intercept, and we should be able to find those things from this graph. Well, the y-intercept is right here, it's two. And the slope, first off, I know it's positive, right? So I'm gonna count, I'm sorry, ooh, hello, it's going downhill. I know it's negative, be careful there. So I'm going down two, one, two, to the right, four. One, two, three, four. And I should have left two lines here, right? down two to the right four. And I can simplify that to negative one half. Now we're back to where we started at the beginning. You know the slope, you know the y-intercept, you plug it into the equation. So the extra step here is finding slope and y-intercept from the graph. That's what we're really testing on here. So m is a negative one half times x plus two. y-intercept of two slope of negative one half. So if I went down one to the right two, I should hit the line, which I do. All right, let's try 16. So we have the point one, one. <coughs> oh, I'm so sorry for all my coughing here. So we have the point one, one and negative one, one. So I need to find the slope and the y-intercept. I'm gonna leave myself two lines this time. So my y-intercept is right here at negative one, and my slope, I go up one to the right one. So it's one over one, which is just one. So I'm going to plug in to y equals mx plus b. m is one minus b. Now on, on your test paper, that one wouldn't be there, so it would just look like x minus one. Okay. All right, so here's 17. Notice I always label my x and y axis. We have negative two and then we have two, one. Those are the two points. All right. So we need slope and y-intercept. I always think it's easier to find the y-intercept for some reason. So that's down here at negative two, one, two. And now my slope is positive. I'm going to count up one, two, three, right? One, two, three. To the right, one, two. One, two. So up three to the right, two. So the slope goes right in front of the x. y equals three halves x. And then y intercept minus two. Okay? Now your quiz is only 10, or your test, I should say, is only 10 questions. So I'm giving you more practice than you need on your test, right? All right, write an equation that is parallel to y equals 2x minus 3 and passes through the point 4, 1. So this is the one that's getting a lot of you, and yesterday I gave you a little review on that as well. So what do we know about parallel lines? We know they have the same slope, right? So we are going to use this slope right here. So a slope of two and the point four, one. So I need to write an equation of a line 
that has a slope of 2 and the point 4, 1 on it. So what I don't know here, the two things that I need to know, I need to know slope and y-intercept. Well, I know the slope, but I don't know the y-intercept for this. So I need to find the y-intercept. So here's what I do. I write y equals mx plus b. I know an x, a y, and an m. X, Y, and M. I know everything except for the B. So I'm going to plug all of those things in. So Y is 1, M is 2, and this is 2 times X, so 2 times 4 plus B. Now I can solve this for B. 2 times 4 is 8. B is being added by 8, so I subtract 8, and I find out that B is negative 7. So now I know that my slope is 2 and my y-intercept is negative 7. So I can plug that into this equation and get y equals 2x minus 7. Remember, we want the variables x and y to be variables. Okay? Now, what's different about number 19 is it says to write an equation that is perpendicular to y equals x minus 4 and goes through the point 1, 3. So what we know about perpendicular lines is they have opposite reciprocal slopes. Opposite reciprocal. So this slope is 1. So the perpendicular slope is 1 turned upside down, right? 1 over 1 is literally just 1 over 1. And since this is positive, this is negative, right? But if we'd had, um, let's say, right, that our slope had been, don't write this. This is just another example. If our slope had been 2 thirds, our perpendicular slope would be upside down, 3 halves, and then negative, right? If our slope had been negative 5, whoops, perpendicular slope, then the perpendicular slope would be upside down 1 over 5, right? Because this is 5 over 1, so turn it upside down. Negative becomes positive. Okay, so 1 is probably not the best example. So now I'm going to use the slope of negative 1 and the point of 1, 3. All right, so my line is going to have a slope of negative 1, but I need to find B. So I'm going to use this information right here. Y, this is X and Y, Y is 3, M is negative 1 times X, which is 1, plus B. Negative 1 times 1 is a negative 1. Right? So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So I get 4 equals B. So now I know M equals negative 1 and B equals 4. And of course we wouldn't need to write that negative 1 there. All right, one last one. Graphing Y equals negative 1 half X plus 4. So. The two things I need to know are slope and y-intercept, right? The slope is negative, so that means I'm going to go down 1 to the right 2. So I'm going to start on positive 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 on the y-intercept. And then I'm going to go down 1 to the right 2 down one to the right two. I can do that as many times as I want. And that gives me that line. I should have used a straight edge to draw that, all right? All right, so there's review number two. Um, review number three is very similar. See if you can do that one and I will post those answers as well. Have an amazing day.